Hey everyone, it's Gio. I brought back my apron. It is my mom's apron. I brought this back from Colorado. And I'm putting it on today because I'm making bread. And I thought that you guys might like to know what my bread recipe is. A lot of us are making bread right now because it's hard to find. And I thought, well, it's time that I make some. So there's a lot of recipes out there, but this is the one that I use all the time. And I thought I'd take you along. I hope you enjoy this. This, this might be fun. This is in my kitchen. Welcome to my channel. This is Fiber Foozy Crafts. My name is Jill, also known as Blossom. I have TheEssentialBlossom.com is my website. I have the essential blossom is me on Instagram. Um, I have a web a page on Facebook. I have a fiber floozy group on Facebook. There's a fiberosity group. I have Twitter, which I haven't been on in I couldn't tell you how long. So anyway, you can find me out there. And so those of you, this is a crafting channel. Um, I made a decision this year to do crafts and, and venture into some other things on my channel other than yarn. However, I will be showing you some things in this video that I've been making. So stay tuned for that. It's coming. But for right now, I want you to know I have my recipe here, and I'm going to be putting the ingredients down at the bottom. And this is from a person local here in Texas from this book, the Knox County Cookbook. And this is the Heritage Cookbook from the museum. And a little short story, my mother-in-law worked at the museum. And that's why I have one of those books. Now this recipe is from Miss Pam Duke, and her son was our doctor here for a while. And it's a very simple recipe, but it never fails me. I never ever have any problem. As long as my yeast is good, everything is fine. So I'm going to go through with you what I'm going to be using today. So I have my yeast set out, and I wanted you to know that it's set out in my bowl here, okay? But I keep it in this jar, and the reason is because I keep this in the freezer. Now I am using SAF instant yeast, which comes in a brick. And I first learned about that watching Heather at the Needy Homesteader. So I'll leave her link below and I'll leave the link on Amazon where you can get this. Now I would be watching for it because the prices are high right now. With this being, today is Tuesday. I don't know what day it is. April the 7th, I think. Anyway, we are in the midst, of course, of a pandemic with the virus, and so things are hard to get, and some of the prices are a little bit high. Anyway, with that being said, keep an eye out for it, and I never have any problem with that yeast. It always, always does good, but I leave it out on my counter in this bowl for a little while to warm up. Now, the recipe tells you to use two packages of, of dry yeast. It doesn't say instant, but that's what I'm using, which equals five teaspoons of the SAF. Okay, also we've got some oil, we've got sugar, we've got salt. Today I'm using iodized sea salt, and you're going to need seven to eight cups of all-purpose flour. Now, I have a flour container that I keep on my counter out all the time. And I will use from this first, this is all purpose flour, and then I will refill it with this. And I wanted you guys to know, when it comes to flour, when I get flour, I put it in the freezer. And it stays in my freezer for a week. And then I take it out and I put it in these containers. Now these containers I, I have gotten from our local pizza place 
these had either olives or peppers or anything. She has the big gallon ones. Um, and then I just scrunch it down as tight as possible and put it on my, on my shelf. The reason I put it in the freezer is because it kills all bugs. You will not have weevils if you put it in the freezer when you bring it home. Okay. I will leave all the ingredients down below to the recipe so you won't have any problem. I've got my kettle going right now. Uh, it's, it's hopping. <laughs> so we're going to need the boiling water uh, in a minute to mix everything together. So let me get my bowl. I am going to point you down so you can see what I'm working on. Okay? Okay, she's boiling. Now we'll turn her off. Now I forgot to tell you, you want to turn your oven on, light on. If you have a light inside your oven, turn that on because I'm going to put the bread in the oven and I want that light to warm the oven up inside just a little bit, It'll make it easier when it's rising. Here is my bread bowl I use. I use a big stainless steel one. And then I use a smaller one also for mixing. Okay. You're going to dissolve the yeast and a quarter teaspoon of sugar in lukewarm water. So let me get some water. Just, just warmish water from your tap. Working. So this is a half a cup of water. We'll pour that into our yeast. Now we need a half a teaspoon of sugar. that in there and that little bit of sugar helps get the yeast going and guys I, there's nothing I just uh, use my finger and kind of dampen all that you know now what you're doing here dampening this yeast and and getting it started you are blooming it this is what they call blooming the yeast So we'll show you what it looks like here in just a little while once it's sat for a minute. Okay. Okay, while that's going, we're going to do shortening sugar and the hot water. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do in this bowl. And you can use shortening or you can use oil. And it's a half a cup. Well, budge. Where's the half cup at? I don't know why that doesn't say it. We use this one to make it easier, okay? Okay, half a cup of oil. And one half cup sugar. What have I got in here? This is the eighth, so four of these. One eighth, two eighths, 
that's a fourth, three eighths, four eighths is a half a cup. And I use wooden spoons. This is my favorite wooden spoon. I got it years ago at the Abilene, Texas craft fair deal that they had. I think it was the the county county fair. And this one is left-handed. See, it's curved to the left for me. My favorite wooden spoon. And I like to use wood instead of plastic when I make bread. You want to use non-reactive things when you're making stuff with yeast. Our yeast is starting to bloom. You all see that? How it's bubbling up? Sure can't smell it. Smells like yeast. Now we need our hot water. Because basically we're going to um, dissolve this sugar. One and two. So just stir that really good to dissolve it. And then you're going to want to let this cool down a little bit, okay? We don't want to start putting our other ingredients in here when it's hot. So we just want it to dissolve, and we're going to let this cool down for a minute. Okay. So that went pretty quick. See that oil sitting on the top, but you can hear and feel that all the sugar has dissolved. So we'll set that aside. We're going to work on our other. Okay, we need seven cups of flour. Okay, now I say it's seven to eight because it all depends on the conditions of your weather. Whether you're, if you are having some damp weather, then you may need more flour to absorb. So we'll get to that. Now I'm going to dry this cup measure off pretty good that we got wet with the water. And one, one reason that I learned making um, bread and, and baked goods that you don't do your salt in with your yeast, okay? So you're gonna put your salt in with your flour and not with your sugar. Be sure you don't do your salt in your sugar mixture. Because when you mix everything together, your salt, if you add it directly in with your yeast at, at one time, it will kill the yeast. So it says seven cups of flour, but we need to leave one cup out. So we're going to do... Uh, and I don't sift it. But I do kind of level it off so I don't get too much. That's one. Two. And I know that it's hard to find yeast because... I was having this discussion. My daughter in Louisiana, three, she's having trouble finding it. Walmart online is not showing it. Uh, I went to King Arthur Flower. They didn't show it.
four. I don't wash my container every time, but I do try to empty it so that I rotate the flour. So I don't know what to tell you about finding the flour, I mean the yeast, but if you can find some, that's one thing I would get more of. Now that's six, so now I'm going to do my seventh cup. And leave it on the counter. And this is still pretty warm, so I'm going to pause here. I'm going to fill up my flour container, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> so I wanted to show y'all in that short time, look at this yeast. Oh, yeah, see, doing just fine. Now we know we're golden. When it does that, it does... It doesn't, your yeast may not make this much, but this being an instant yeast, this is the reaction that I get, okay? Now I'm going to add the salt to the flour. And it is one tablespoon of salt. Please do not forget your salt. Your bread will not taste the same. Don't ask me how I know that. And what I do is I take that salt and I put it in there. And I mix it with my hands. Again, I said I don't do any sifting of anything. I'm not going to sift it together. I just do it all by hand. It's also a good way to feel if there's any lumps in your flour. You will you'll find those. You'll mix them through. Being sea salt, that's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Now, when it's mixed in with a flour like this, it's not going to cause the reaction that it would if you added it straight to the to the mixture. Okay, now, set that aside. This is this has cooled down to lukewarm. We're going to add our yeast to that. Y'all forgive me uh, on this because I've not really made any cooking videos before. This is a first for me. <laughs> so you really just kind of mix it just a little bit. Kind of incorporate, you're not, this is not going to incorporate into the oil. It's just going to kind of mix it a little bit. That's all. Now we're going to add that to our flour. So I'm going to just kind of make a hole in there. Pour it in. And yep, I pour it all in at once. It's all going to go in there anyway. There's a little bit of stuff on the inside of this bowl, but not bad. 
Now I'm going to mix this with my spoon first. Kind of get things going. Kind of get things to where you're moistening everything. And remember, we've got this flour to work with because it's going to go on the counter here in a minute. Now, don't get too crazy about, uh-oh, I'm going to have to knead it. Yes, but it's not like you think. That's why I use this recipe, and I've never had any problem. I am not a pro bread kneader, but it's always worked for me. So now I'm just getting all that off the edges of the bowl. Yes, you could use a stand-up mixer. I prefer to do it this way because I like to know how to do it. And if I do this, I will always have the feel for it. And that's what that looks like. Very sticky. Now, that's about half of that. Put that there. Cover it with the flour. And y'all, this is so therapeutic. I can't even explain to you what the feeling of this warm dough, getting my hands in here and getting to incorporate this and just, I don't know what to tell you. Now, I don't do anything real fancy about how I do this. Because this first half of this flour, you're really just mixing it in. And I just push it down and fold it. Roll it, turn it, fold it. If you press it too hard without, especially without anything on here, you're going to get um, it sticking to your counter. I add just a little bit more flour. I know I will need a little bit of this. Because this is going to make two loaves, okay? So after it rises once, then we'll split it and I'll roll it out again. And we'll use that last little bit of flour. It's not terribly humid here. So this is actually feeling pretty good. It's got a nice squish to it. See how it relaxes out? It's not sticking to me. We've got a nice good amount of flour in it, I think. There's nothing exactly smooth about this, okay? It's not really smooth. You can see that. And that's okay. I'm just going to kind of make it into a ball. Now, kind of clean out my bowl a little bit. Sometimes I wash it out. Now we're going to take our oil, dribble some oil in there, probably about a half a tablespoon. I'm going to take this, put it down in the bowls. Flip it. See now it's oily on the top. Flip it around to where it's kind of oily all over and leave it. Let me wash my hands. Now I have a cover for this. 
but you may not have what I have. Being that I used to be a hairdresser, I have a whole bunch of these covers. And you can get them at Sally's Beauty Supply or online in the beauty area of wherever you're looking. But I keep one in my drawer. And it's one of these with the elastic on it. So I'm going to put that on there. I'm not going to worry about spraying the inside of it. Well, I probably should. Let's do that just to be on the safe side. It, this usually does not get big enough that I have to worry about it. But I'll just spray a little on the inside of that. Okay, so we're going to put this over here in the oven. And we're going to let it do its thing. Usually, according to the recipe, you do that until it's doubled in bulk. That's pretty much what, pretty much what all of your bread recipes are going to tell you. Um, I can give you an idea when I take it out about where I judge to be double and enough just, just because of doing the recipe several times. And I'm, it, it makes two loaves. And I'm going to use these, I like these square loaf pans, and I will grease them, and I use lard. I don't use Crisco. I don't like all the ingredients in Crisco, so I just use plain old lard. And um, you don't have to dust them with flour, you just grease them, okay? So I will do that and get these ready, and set those aside. And get this cleaned up and I'll be right back. So y'all don't run away. I'm going to talk about a little yarny stuff. So hold on. Okay. I am back. This is my basket that I keep up front next to my chair. Sorry, I'm putting my deals back in. I was running around gathering everything. And I haven't finished anything since the last time you saw. Well, I mean, I finished a few things. But anyway. Nothing major. <laughs> okay. Oh. Sorry. Whew. Yeah, this is my basket that I keep on my chair. Anyway, let me move this over. Okay, that's better. <laughs> I had you pretty close because I was showing you how to do the bread. Okay. I'm making things for my booth and to go to the craft fairs in the fall. Now, I went over to my booth, I don't know if I mentioned this, last week and paid for my booth for April because they have to pay their rent there at the building. So I just felt like it was the right thing to do to hold my booth. So I guess I'm paying for storage of my stuff over there. And then they're going to see what things are like come May. So we will see. For those of you that are new here, I have a consignment booth where I'm renting by the month. It's a 10 by 10. And I put my, my items in there and then they take a certain little commission off of it and I pay by the month and then I will go over and work one day per month as a part of my contract. Now I took them the contract and they had my money but I have not paid yet. I have not um, been able to because right after I opened the booth they had to close down because of COVID. So I'm working on more towels. Now I finished the red, white, and blue ones. And now I have finished. Now these aren't completely finished. I have to put buttons on them. But these are the uh, blue ones. And 
and I'm rounding this here at the top. So that'll get a button right there. And I have two of those. I made a knitted washcloth. I have to weave all my ends in. And I do some uh, change right here in the corner, and then that'll be my, my hoop. This is the grandma's favorite knit dishcloth. Then I made a coaster size, and this will be a scrubby. And what I do is I put the netting, I crochet this, the size of this, and I attach it on the back as a scrubby. Probably won't be this color. I only have these two colors rolled up. So I'm going to have to get that done so I can finish these. So that video will probably be coming up. I'm going to try this week. Because I've been saying that since I started this channel that I would show you all that. So that's that set. And that was using this. Now this is like a peaches and cream, but this is thinner. I think this is the yeah peaches and cream, but I don't remember. Um, let's see, it's a little thinner than the regular peaches and cream. And then I did this set. These are a little bit different. They're a little shorter, but I don't think it'll matter. So there's those two. And I made one of the scrubby backs for that. And I made, now Joe from Joe's Web is making these. And this is the thermal pad, hot pad, that is the Dana from Wanderlust Crochet. Hi, Dana. This is, hi, Joe. <laughs> this is the uh, hot pad that they, they've been doing with the thermal stitch. And my hubby and I both like this. This is so much sturdier than what I've been doing. And it's a little harder on my hands, but I really like that. And I'm going to be making more of these. But I think these will sell really well. So that goes with that. This is the yarn. This is a peaches and cream, but I do not know. the, the I don't have the ball band for it. This is stuff that I have just in my stash. And I started making things from this book that I got from Hershner's. This is the Let's Dish by Peaches and Lily Sugar and Cream. There's a Peaches and Cream and there's a Sugar and Cream. I don't remember what's what, but anyway. So this is the one that I made. But instead of it being a dish clock, it turned out a lot bigger. Some of you may have seen this on my Instagram and my Facebook, but it's fun though. I enjoyed making this a lot. It's got a little pico at the edge. I really, this is perfect for putting a candle on. You could also put a, a plant on it. You could put as a centerpiece, you know, on your table to put dish a dish on uh, it's it turned out great but it's not a dishcloth it's way too big so but that will be matching I probably price that different than the set that set but but it matches it so I got those done The next lovey that I'm going to be doing is going to be this little guy, little bear, kind of a lavender, light lavender, got a kind of a purpley nose, and hubby picked this color to go with it, and this is an ice yarn. My tag's over there. Hold on. Let me get that for you. I only have two ice yarns in my stash one that i got from julie of kept in stitches with julie 
and I won her giveaway. I had that one. No, I had three. And I got one in the carousel box the other day that I got from Crystal. Did the carousel, the coffee, crochet, and cuddles, Crystal. Her carousel box had some, and I took some ice yarn out of it. And this one I had gotten at the thrift store. And this is Air Stripes. It's a number three weight, 100% acrylic. And the color, since I don't have the original package, I'm not going to be able to tell you the color. And I don't see a number. But it's a purple and white. So it's white, then it goes to purple and back to white. But that's going to be the next lovey. That's what I'm starting. And I'm, it, here's the hair tie. I just put it around his neck so that I have it ready. And I use an eye hook when I do that. And I use Z, Zelda NRJ3. I use her tutorial to do these. And I know how to do it by heart now. I got something in the mail from, look at how cute these are. I don't know if y'all saw these when she put these up or if she still has any in her shop. But this is the closure bag, the snap closure bag for your um, notions. And this is from Ella at No Catchy Name. Of course, I had to have the blossoms. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. I love that. I'm I'm gonna want some more of those, I think. Okay, and then let me get my basket. I've gotten really close. I'm almost done with my Encanto wrap. This is the Encanto Wrap by Crochet Luna. See, I'm right down here. I'm doing the final section at the end. And Encanto means Maleficent. Now, she has another one out, and I have the pattern, but I have not started it yet. And it's an infinity cowl, her next one. Uh, La Luna, I think, maybe. Oh, man, I had the picture for this all set for y'all. Let me find it. Where are you at? I think I flipped it. Here it is. Encanto by Crochet Luna. It's in her Etsy shop. So I'm close. I just have a few more rows to go on that. I had hoped I would have it done so I could show y'all, but look how pretty. This is the trebles. Here's the mesh. And of course, when I block this, this mesh will open up. It's going to be gorgeous. And also in my basket, what else have I got? Okay, these are just random colors. I'm working on this. Also using... Um, a size I that wrap uses an H is that a five millimeter and the I no H is five point five and a I is a six. But that wrap is number one yarn. It's fingering weight takes a little longer. So I just started, this is just a random blanket I started. I don't know how long this is. 
but this is just something mindless and very random uh, rows on this, like doubles and halves and singles. Just I'm just varying it up, and I'm just pulling stuff off of my shelf to use up some of my stash. Okay, so I've got got a pink. I've got a green. I've got a, like a teal green. I've got a Kelly green. And I've got this, uh, I think this is the Rainbow Stripes Red Heart. And a cream. And that's what I've got in it so far. And I'll be adding more to it as I go. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Okay, I had to go get this because it sits next to my, at my computer desk when I'm watching lives and stuff, you know. This one is knit. So we've got just knit and pearls. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I did some garter stitches, garter rows here. I did some, this is, this first five stitches is all knit for every row. So it'll continue that garter around the edge and make a garter edge all the way around. I'm intending this to be a small children's blanket, but then I do fives, and I wound up doing the wrong number, so I didn't get even, so I wound up with a three, but it's five pearls and five knits, and then five pearls and five knits back and forth, and then I do a few more rows of the garter, stick, garter rows, and then I've just started the second section and I'm holding two yarns together so I have this one which is a red heart it's an older red heart and it's about a three weight they call it a four but it's a light four and it's very silky like um, Karen simply soft and then this one is a three weight and this is the guppy from uh, Hershner's. This is the willow guppy that I got. I, got. I think I got this in that pack that I got from Dana at Wonderless Crochet that she sent me for being a grandma. <laughs> and so holding those together, and that's what I'm getting. And that's all. Besides making my essential oils. So I had told y'all about that. And you can go to my, um, let's see how we're doing. Now it is 1240. We've grown quite a bit, but we're not quite there yet. But it looks good. Looks good. But see, I didn't really need to grease that. The reason I don't like to, then I have to either wash it or throw it away. So, um, On my Facebook page for The Essential Blossom, you will see that I have, and, I, and on my website, I've added two bottles of essential oils. They are blends, and I'm working on adding some more. So, okay, it is about quarter after one. So I would say today, this took about an hour and a half. And so now we're going to bring it out of the pan. All I'm doing is kind of pulling it towards itself, and then I just bring it out. Okay.
I was going to put some more flour to this, but honestly, I don't think I will. That this step is going to be very easy. All I did was roll it because it's greased. It rolls very easily on my my counter here. This is a uh, wow. This this counter is I don't know how many years old, but I'm going to kind of push it into like a rectangle like that. And then I have this tool that I got at Bed Bath & Beyond, and it's a bread tool of some sort. I don't even know what they call it. And I'm going to estimate the middle and cut it. You can use the back of a spatula if that works for you. Now let me bring my pans over here. We're just going to drop those in, do a little shake, but kind of push it over to the edges so they kind of meet at the corner here. Give it a tap, shake it both directions. And that one's done. Push this one. And they're close. I can't get exact. You could use a kitchen scale to check it if you want to. But if you got it off, then you'd have to incorporate that extra piece in. So I just go with it. And I kind of make the top look like bread here. I mean, you know, not so squarish. Like how bread would come up in the center, kind of. That way, when it rises again, it'll kind of come up in that shape. Okay? Now I'm going to cover these again. And I'll show you how to use something else. You can use just regular cellophane, clear plastic, nothing fancy. Just something with some drape over the edge, okay? And I just give it a brief little spray and put it on there and leave it just like that. This one, I'm going to put this little bonnet back on it. And these are going to go back in the uh, oven. And I forgot to mention this before. If you don't have a light in your oven, you can turn your oven on to about 300. When you feel it start to get warm, Turn it off and let it sit for a few minutes before you put the bread in there to rise. And it'll be warm in the oven, but it won't be all the way up to heat. Okay, we'll see you back here when these double up. Okay, well, I don't have my earphones on for this, but anyway, um, I just went to the mailbox. They go in. Okay, you're turned up. And I got this little package that's wet because I bleached it. This is from Local Laser Co. on Etsy. They are out of Greenboro, North Carolina. Somehow I expected this package to be bigger. Local Laser Co. Y'all see? I got my tags. I will leave the information down below, but oh, they turned out nice. 
I've never bought anything like this because I usually do not put anything on my things that I make. But now that I have the booth and kind of my full-time thing, can y'all see it? The Essential Blossom. And they're, they're leather. Wow, they did a nice job. I like it. So now I can stitch these to all of the garments and things that I'm making. Okay, so I've got my oven turned on to 350. And I've got the bread in there. I just left it in there for about a minute till they could warm up the pans a little bit. Now I'm going to set them up on top. Now I like these to be just a little bit taller. Like this one's looking good. But it had a little bit more dough in it. And I like it to get, get up on the top of that pan. It's just about there. But with the oven on and the heat, it will come up some more. They'll raise up some more with the heat from the oven here. So I'll put these on the back back here. So there's a vent there, see? Okay, so that was about 45 minutes to get to that point. So it takes really, I would say to make the bread would be at least, at least four hours, if not a little bit, four to five hours. Okay, we're going to put them in the oven. because. I see how that's coming up over the top. Now, of course, like I said, this one had just a little. Now, you want to peel this kind of careful so you don't want to let it drop. Although, just, just be easy with it. My oven is at 350. Here's the other one. See, it's almost to the top right there. So I think that's as good as we're going to get because this one didn't have as much. Okay. 40 to 50 minutes until brown. And it usually feels slightly hard. I'll show you when it comes out. Okay, they are out of the oven. I've got just a little plain rack here that I set them on my counter just so they kind of get a little bit of a draft underneath them. But let me show you what they look like. This is the shorter one. I wish you had Smell-O-Vision. It smells so dang good in here. Hear that? nice. You don't do like cakes. You wouldn't put a, a, a probe in there. It wouldn't help. It's really just a matter of learning how it works. And there's the other one that was above. This is where I like them to be, but sometimes they get there, sometimes they don't. And this is about the right color. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I will leave all of the ingredients down below and all the instructions for you so that you will know how to make this. And um, I hope y'all are doing all right. I will talk to you soon. I have some more videos coming. And uh, like you guys, I have days where I just 
I just can't be social. Which is it's strange, I know. This is social distancing. But I've had some down days, some days that I just didn't want to be on camera and talk. And it's just it's it's depressing sometimes, but we have to find joy in things every day. And I will tell you, making bread is a joyful thing. Once you do it a few times, it's just, of course, it tastes wonderful, but it's necessary if you can't find bread in your area. And it just, just makes you really feel good. It's an accomplishment. And accomplishments help us feel good, too. So I hope you will make it. Let me know if you do. And uh, let me know how things turned out for you. If I can be of any help, my email will be down below too. So thank you all and I'll take care and have fun today.